Melissa from Live Healthy and Blessed. And this is Cameron. Today we're going to teach you how to make homemade yogurt. It's really easy and you don't need to buy any fancy equipment. You don't need to buy any incubators or any fancy starters. Uh, you only need a few ingredients. You need uh, milk, you need a sweetener of some sort, and then uh, we like to do, well you don't have to do a sweetener, but that's what we like to do because we really don't like the taste of unsweetened yogurt. Um, and then uh, we like to add vanilla extract as well and then you'll need um, some plain yogurt as well that's going to um, have the cultures in it to start your fresh batch. So the first thing what we're going to do, we're going to make, make a big batch because we have a large family. You can easily half it or quarter it if you want. This keeps several weeks, I don't even know how long we've kept it before, maybe even a month in the fridge. It stays a very long time. Um, but we eat a lot of yogurt a few times a week, and with we've got seven people in our family, we go through a lot of yogurt. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get a nice big pot, and we're going to put our milk in our pot. So we're going to be doing two gallons. If you have raw milk, of course that would be best, or organic, but we don't have access to raw milk so you can just use regular old milk from the store we use whole milk though not skim milk or anything like that you want to have all that nice fat in there it's not bad for you all right there's one and one more and then all we're going to do is we're going to put it on the stove on medium and we're going to uh, just put it on medium on our burner. You may want to do something different depending on your uh, burner, but ours is medium. And then we let it sit until it gets up to 180 degrees. And once it's up to 180 degrees, then we're going to take it off the burner. Um, but it'll take a little while for it to do that. I don't even bother to stir it. I've never had mine scorch and burn. Just don't forget about it. Just keep an eye on it every now and then. But it's pretty simple. You just let it sit on the burner. Like we're going to do and turn it on medium and we'll come back when it's reached 180. Okay, it's been uh, about an hour and 10 minutes right now and I just used a meat thermometer, just a little meat thermometer, and my milk has come up to 180 degrees and it's steaming right now. And so all we're gonna do is take it off the burner we're just going to set it on another burner. Now this is going to take a while for it to cool down to 110 degrees. Um, so depending on your stove, it may take longer, but it took mine an hour and 10 minutes just to give you a ballpark of about how long it'll take to do it. Um, so that's it. Once this cools down, then we're going to add the rest of our ingredients. Okay, it's been about three hours now. Um, and our milk has cooled down to 110. Now if you have a smaller batch, it's probably not going to take nearly as long to cool off. Um, but anyways, our milk has got like a skin on the top of it, and so we're just going to uh, take a whisk. And I just like to get that off, because you don't want all that in your milk. That would be kind of gloppy. So we're just going to get that off. All those little bits. Okay, I think we're good on that. Okay, now we have um, our, we're going to add our sweetener that you don't have to do that if you want to have plain unsweetened yogurt, but that's the way all the recipes out on the internet basically are is for plain unsweetened yogurt. And I wanted something a little bit more like what you get at the store that's sweetened with vanilla, but just much healthier. Um, the different ways I've done that, I've always done white sugar typically. Um, which isn't technically the healthiest, but um, that's what I've always done. I used to use more, but now I only use about a half, one and a half cups for two gallons. You could do more, you could do less, just whatever your preference is. I've done Sucanat before, and it wasn't very sweet, and it turned the yogurt a little bit more brownish because of the natural sugar. Um, just last time I did a batch, I tried honey because I'd never tried honey to see how that would work. And it worked and it had a slight honey flavor, but it was a bit more sour than with the white sugar. And today, I've never done this before, but we're going to try maple syrup. And I have a feeling it's probably going to turn out really good. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to do that. So you can dump that in there, Cameron. We're just going to dump it straight into our pot. Just makes one dish. 
I'm going to scrape it out and I'll get it for you. Okay, so that's one and a half cups of maple syrup that we're using. I'm going to put that in the sink real quick. Okay, and then we've got three quarters of a cup of vanilla extract. You could do more or less depending on your taste. And this is my homemade vanilla extract. So if you bought something at the store, it might be a little more strong. Um, but just figure out how much you like if you even want to use it at all. And then this, no matter what you're doing, whether it's a plain batch or sweetened batch, you need your plain yogurt. I bought that from the store. This is two cups of plain yogurt. Um, that's make sure it has the live active cultures in it um, because that's what's going to get this new batch started. Uh, some people save their yogurt from previous batches, but I've heard that that doesn't always work very well. And especially since this is going to be sweetened with vanilla, I'm not, I don't ever bother with that. Um, and I've heard too that it can get weaker and weaker and more and more sour the more you keep reusing um, the yogurt from previous batches. So I always just buy a good quality um, yogurt from the store as my starter. And so we've got two cups of that. And we're just going to mix that in there. You got it all? Alright. Oh, I'm going to start stirring it up and I'll get the rest of that. And then we just use a whisk. You don't stir it up too fast. I've heard that if you mix it up too much, it can kind of mess up your um, mess up your batch or mess up your the cultures that are in there. But I have whisked it up pretty good and haven't really noticed a difference in it the way it turns out. But so you want to make sure all of your maple syrup or your sweetener, especially if you're using white sugar, it's going to take a little more or longer for it to dissolve and stir up because um, that sugar is going to take a while to break down all those crystals. And especially if you use sucanat, it's going to take a bit longer to dissolve that. If you use sucanat or something like that with a bigger crystal, it's best to do it before your milk is cooled all the way down because it will dissolve better because it will be a little warmer. So you could take it off the stove um, and then you could dissolve your sucanat if you want to use that. And then continue to let it cool down to 110. It has to cool down to 110 before you add your the yogurt starter like I did um, because otherwise it'll be too hot and it'll kill um, all those good cultures in there and, and the bacteria. And if it's too cool, well it won't be warm enough to set it up and turn into yogurt. So 110 is basically room temperature, the temperature that you want to get it to. All right. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put that into our containers that we have over here. I found that this is the perfect size for our batches. Um, I got these at the store. These are Pyrex glass dishes, like reusable. Um, each one of these is a half gallon size, so I use four for my batch. And we're just going to divide it all up evenly. Try not to spill too bad. I'll do a little bit here. Just all up. I usually will pour it once it gets not quite as full. I'm going to do a few scoops, Kayla. Maybe don't spill it. <laughs> and I usually kind of like to spread it all out instead of pouring it all in one container just to make sure that I get an even amount of the yogurt starter in every single container. So I'll just kind of partially fill each one and then go back and fill them all up just to make sure that it's really evenly distributed. And um, you don't need any, like I said, you don't need any special incubators. You don't need any special starters online that cost a fortune. Um, it's really, really easy to do, and it costs way less than it would if you bought yogurt at the store. You can basically get two gallons of yogurt, if you want to make that much, for the cost of your milk, and then your sweetener and your starter, of course, which really does not add up to a whole lot of money, and yogurt is very, very expensive at the store. And if you really wanted to, you can make your own Greek yogurt by just straining it. You can get like a, like a fine cheesecloth to strain it, but I found that's really a lot of work, and then you're get, getting rid of that whey, which is actually healthy for you anyways. So, um, there's really, I, I don't bother with the Greek yogurt, um, 
we just leave it as it is and it's actually very thick anyways so there's really no need to do that and we like to add our yogurt to smoothies and um, have it with breakfast and it's just really good all right let's finish filling that up And this may seem like a lot of yogurt, but for our family, it doesn't last all that long. And it's never gone bad in that time it takes us to use it up. Because <laughs> we use it in smoothies a lot. If it's ever getting, I'm afraid we're not going to use it up quick enough, then we just go ahead and throw it in a smoothie. And then it's gone. So all we're going to do now is put our lids on. Don't spill it because it will leak. All right. I like to stack mine. Let's move this out of the way. Just put it right here. Just leave it right there. Wipe it. All right. So now all I'm going to do is I like to take two like bath towels. I just use some old towels that I'm not really using. And for me, I like to kind of crisscross them. And then I take my yogurt here. Move it over this way. And I just do one stack. And one more. And then I wrap it up. All right. And depending on the temperature your house is, um, you may want to insulate it a little bit better, just and it depends on what time of year it is too. But ours always stays warm enough that I've never had that problem. So I've double wrapped it in my bath towels and I find a place on my counter to let it sit uh, out of the way undisturbed for anywhere between 12 to 20 hours. I usually like to do about 14, um, but it's not a big deal if it goes longer or a little bit less. But the longer it sits, it'll be thicker and it'll be better. Some people do eight hours, but it's not going to be as thick of a yogurt. So 14 is usually what I go for and then I just set my timer and then 14 hours, we'll be back. Okay, our yogurt, we let sit in those wrap towels for about 14 hours. Uh, like I said, it can be anywhere between like 12 and 20. The longer you let it sit, the more thick it'll be. So if you don't let it sit long enough, you'll kind of have a more runny yogurt. Um, but what you do after you're done, we took it out of the towels and we put it in the fridge. And you want to let it get in the fridge overnight so it gets nice and cold and really, really thick. Um, so we just took this one out of the fridge. It's already been overnight. It's nice and cold and thick. Um, one thing I just want to say real quick, my lids always seem to have a lot of condensation from water on it from sitting in those towels. And so what I always do is I just bang all that condensation off. Um, the only thing I want to say about that is one time uh, some of the condensation sat here on the yogurt for a while. On the top there was water on there. And actually this was when it was, we had a batch sitting in there for probably several weeks because like I said it takes a while. We, we make such a big batch and so it takes a little while to use it up. But um, anyways it started to get little moldy patches on the top because, and I think it was from the water that had dripped on the top of it. So, um, but that was after it sat in the fridge for a long time. So I always just kind of like to pick it up and then get the condensation off off of the lid. Um, so this doesn't have any sitting on top of the yogurt. Um, so this batch we did with maple syrup, which I've never done before. This was sort of an experiment. Like I said before, I usually always did white sugar, but we're trying to eat healthier now. And so we don't use, we, we did honey last time and it, and it tasted a little bit like honey, not a very strong honey flavor, but it was pretty tart. It, the honey, because it's a natural sweetener, wasn't super sweet, sort of like the white sugar was, even though it's the same amount. Um, we put one and a half cups of our maple syrup in. I used to have like two cups or more for a batch like this, but um, since we always top our yogurt with fruit or some sort of a homemade sauce, like a berry sauce, it's adding some sweetener back on there, so we don't like our yogurt super sweet, but we don't like it unsweetened because it's just way too sour for us. Um, so we were going to try it and see what it tastes like with the maple syrup. You want to try? And we'll show you. It's very thick, too. I don't know if you can see here. It's pretty thick. Pretty thick here. 
very nice and thick yogurt. So it doesn't actually have a maple flavor, really. Can you taste maple? No, it's just no. not sour. No, it's not sour, but it's not really overly sweet okay. either. But you can always add more of the sweetener if you like, or less. It's completely up to you, but I wouldn't add too much to mess it up. But you can probably use anywhere between one and two cups of your sweetener of choice for a batch this size. Like I said, this is a two gallon batch. Um, if you use less than one cup, it's gonna basically taste um, sweetened. So, all right, well, we hope you guys enjoyed the yogurt video. Go make yourself some yogurt, and we also have a homemade granola video. So go check that out. Thanks.